It's absolutely a wonderful time to think back to that incident, baby. When Judge Greg Mattis searched Wendy Williams' whole studio for potential troublemakers. About fueling your stuff. You, on the other hand, have admitted to being addicted to co- Absolutely. Secondly, you continue to show symptoms of your addiction. Okay. Lastly, what are those symptoms? You, Tell me. These nasal passages you keep uh, yes. coughing and up. And I did Secondly, aphrin. And I did you, aphrin. This eternal cold that you continue to have. Yes, okay. Oh, that yes. you can't have to come to work. Because every other okay. week, now you're even stupid so low as to blame it on your baby, your newborn. How oh, low can you get? Gosh. That's about as low as you can get. Dad. Judge Mattis went in on Wendy Horde. But how true was everything he was saying? Are there receipts here that prove everything he said about Wendy is true? Because when the judge's voice hit the high notes, threatening to sue her and talking about her eight pregnancy terminations, addiction, nasal passages, and bisexuality, it seemed like he was guilty of what she accused him of. I've been on her show. I can hot topics for years now. From calling me a, a, a slut from the pole to bank robbing, robbing them and this. And then she turns around in the next breath says, if Tokyo Tony was my cousin, I would pull all kinds of strings. Oh, I love so It's like this. So I realized what it was. Did I not tell y'all? Mm -hmm. She wants me. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, no wait. joke on God. No way. Tokyo, okay. So this famous incident between Wendy and Greg started in the early 2000s when Wendy Williams suggested that Judge Mattis was having an affair. The judge went to the show to promote his book. So Wendy started the interview by saying that she keeps it real with her audience and that she has no secrets to hide. With that in mind, Wendy started questioning Judge Mattis about an alleged mistress and the claims that he was caught in a motel room with a crackhead and a woman who wasn't his wife. That might not be true, according to you, oh, about yes. this woman that you, that allegedly you, you slept with, oh, you allegedly Wendy, got her pregnant. Her. Yeah. Listen to, just her pregnant. let me draw up the skeleton, Judge, and then you feel- Wendy mentioned that there was a woman who claimed that Judge Mattis had not only slept with her while high on crack, but also asked her if she could sleep with his wife. The woman also claimed that Greg had gotten her pregnant at the time. Wendy, being Wendy, simply wanted an explanation from the judge, but what she expected to be a simple clarification turned out to be the most embarrassing thing of her life. Greg then went completely off-road, accusing Wendy Williams of hiding her usage of crack because to her nasal passages and a persistent cod judge. Wendy also acknowledged having used crack in the past, and Greg suggested that she might still use it now. Not only did Wendy keep bringing up Matisse rumors about her, but he also decided to bring up some other things he heard about her. In addition to calling Wendy an addict, he also accused her of terminating at least eight pregnancies and stated that was into women for. Matisse also thought Wendy might still be on crack because she was allegedly in and out of that bathroom during their interview. For all free. Your sponsors continue People must to, buy my book to get the information that they need to get. To finance this radio show knowing that you had eight of a coke addict and a bisexual room. sponsors continue to put up money for this show you know what judge hey, you, you are protesting watch out for the anti crowd i can tell you that let me just you say watch this. out for them you the better say something to them don't let, explain to no, me let, let me say <laughs> you something you ain't no trial with me that's let, who you let me say, no say something with. to you and yeah. to everybody listening go right ahead See, you you, thought, you, you are thought, the you thought you gonna get me on here no, 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 and hijack no, no. me you, you are the, the tyson beckford you got the wrong person. judge mattis told wendy among other things that he had never heard of the woman and that she was likely paid to tell the story However, what interests me more are the things that he accused Wendy of first. One of the things that Mata said is that Wendy terminated eight of her pregnancies okay. When Wendy did her biopic Wendy Wood Willems the movie, she did talk about terminating one pregnancy in the film when he talks about a man who she said ruined her credit by renting cars on her credit cards without telling her, and in the end she ended up pregnant with his baby, she said our relationship, I mean if you could call it that didn't. Even last a year, when it was all over my credit was ruined, and I was. Growing his seed, I went alone, 
and I went in secret, I didn't tell him or anyone else it was one of the loneliest experiences of my life, but you see Judge Greg was accusing Wendy of terminating eight pregnancies, and this was in 2003, so he was basically suggesting that the eight terminations took place before 2003, how exactly did people find out that she had terminated eight pregnancies, did she tell? somebody and that somebody betrayed her trust, while she did also say that she had a few miscarriages. Before she gave birth to Kevin Jr., but eight pregnancy terminations, y'all, that's insane. That aside, Judge Mattis also said that there were rumors floating around claiming that Wendy is by okay, I know there were rumors back in the day that Wendy was also actually into women and possibly had three SS with her ex-husband husband Kevin Hunter. In fact, some people truly believe that she had teacher SS at the beginning with. Sharina Hudson and Kevin, but Kev took it too far and fell in love with Sharina. Then there was that tea about Wendy and Robin Crawford. The thing is Wendy interviewed Robin on her show and Robin confirmed that she had a romantic relationship with her late best friend Whitney Houston after Wendy's appearance on the show. She befriended Robin and a publication claimed that something more romantic was happening because Wendy had stated in one of her appearances, I am not a lesbian. I prefer women for friendship. I prefer men and I like the D. Wendy has been seeking female company, and Whitney is turning in her grave as a result of Wendy's discovery of Robin Crawford. First off, with all due respect to lesbians, I'm not cool with that. Robin is married, has kids, and I'm not a home wrecker, so I've never been inquisitive. Although she may have denied that there was anything romantic going on, there was a time when Tokyo surprised me by giving me a period at the age of 55. Being a woman is so difficult, and I can't image the two of us in a relationship. Yesterday after the show, when Tony was asked in an interview how she felt about Wendy talking about her, Tokyo responded that she didn't trust her because, among other things, Wendy was over 50 years old and claimed that her daughter Black Chai, a black woman, was her best friend. Tokyo also mentioned that she had been on Hot Topics calling her names, but in reality, Wendy wanted her. Tokyo went on to tell the story of a time when China had a party bus with a few people who were going to pick up Wendy, and her mom refused to go. But China persuaded her to go, and she did. Tokyo claimed that when they arrived at Wendy's door, a frail old lady picked up and pretended to hug and apologize. I security, best friend, quote unquote, had to hold her up the entire time. Mm. I told him to, because it would look like a bad look. You was lit, ho. Lit. You went in the bathroom, which you grown. You want to snort a little cup? <laughs> oh, you want to snort? Now, you go in the bathroom and then you come out the bathroom. After you half an hour, Wendy apparently came out beaming and tried her hardest to give the security guard the cookie. When Tokyo learned that Wendy had opened her legs for her, knowing that Tokyo is gay, she reportedly wrapped her legs around the pole and gave her a suggestive hump at her request. Bus. I said, Wendy, won't you get up there and pop that for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, am I lying? Yeah. I said, go up there, pop that, and I lean back like a whole. I was like, yeah, pop that for me. And she was like, Where is China when all this is happening? Sitting right there looking at everybody like I'm crazy. <laughs> 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 and she was like, What? And took her long. Leg, I gotta admit, her legs is pretty. <laughs> okay. She took that long leg. Youngster, since Tokyo spilled the tea, we won't take it too seriously. However, we do know that there were rumors about Tokyo, and Judge Greg Mattis was aware of them. Best believe that he was prepared when Wendy attempted to bring up his name at this point. As for Wendy's addiction, we also know that she has battled it for a long time. In fact, when she entered rehab in 2019, she disclosed on her talk show that she was residing in a sober house. For some time now, and even today and beyond, I have been living in a sober house. I am driven by my 24-hour sober coach back to a home, lights out by 10 p.m. So I go to my room and I stare at the ceiling and I fall asleep to wake up to come back here to see you. So that is my truth. Furthermore, she disclosed in a subsequent interview that although her employers were aware of her addiction, they continued to let her work because she was bringing in a sizable salary for them. I was a functioning addict. I report to work on time 
and I'd walk in and all of my coworkers, including my bosses would know, but instead of firing me, you see, I would grab my headphones and arrogantly walk in the studio and dare them to fire me because I was making ratings. A functioning addict has several alarm clocks. You're when it comes to addiction, baby Bert Gorey, Wendy's first husband, revealed that the real reason they broke up was because of her crazy addiction. Wendy reportedly kept this aspect of her life a secret from him while they were dating. Bert claimed that he was completely unaware of Wendy's suspected usage until after the breakup, when he realized that her erratic conduct could have been explained by the addiction. As a result, they had a terrible breakdown and their entire relationship became extremely strained. Can you believe that during their honeymoon, they had a heated argument because Wendy wanted to leave Bert alone? Last year, Wendy was scheduled to attend the Atlanta Women's Expo, but the Expo team informed Wendy's team that her promo video was unusable and pushed back on it, claiming that Wendy seemed completely disoriented a video of Wendy claiming to be still married to her ex-husband Kevin was also rejected by the Expo team because they thought it would severely upset people, especially the women's empowerment-focused audience at the Women's Expo. In her most recent documentary, her addiction was also discussed. When one of her loved ones discovered a bottle of vodka among her belongings and inquired, did you drink this whole thing today? Wendy yelled back, telling him to keep the bottle in bed with her while she recovered. Apparently the family even got down with a neurologist and the doctor explained to them that Wendy was suffering from alcohol-rated brain damage and they told her that her alcohol intake had done irreversible harm to the layers of her brain. All right, and away we go. Love you, Wendy. All I know is how to be famous. I really want to be back on television. You're going to be back on TV. That's yep. easy. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay always. Wendy, make sure you look here. One, two, three. But in reality, there's something wrong. So when Judge Greg Mathis was talking about her addiction that was barely anything new well, maybe back in the early 2000s it was a big deal because maybe it was something Wendy was still hiding. But as the years went by, she became pretty candid about her journey and her addictions. And that interview goes down as one of the most explosive ones ever on Wendy OK. I think they eventually worked out their differences because in 20, 22, Greg was out here talking about how he believes that Wendy is still valuable to the community and thinks she can make a glorious comeback. He said, I think that beyond her flaws and her problems past to present, I think she still means something to the community and that's what counts and matters. I think she still remains relevant to our community. He even added that he had spoken with Wendy on the phone and he asked if she would do a tour with him was she focused on empowering black girls and he would focus on empowering black men or black boys, then he said. So I believe there's some redemption to be had and I believe she could still be a benefit particularly to our community who sees very few talk show hosts, especially black women. As for how Wendy is doing now that we are already on her topic, she was seen publicly for the first time since May 2023, a couple of days ago, visiting a Newark herbal supplement store in New Jersey African biomineral cell food with her. Son, Kevin Hunter Jr., Wendy was very alert, so it seems that she is doing better. However, what do you think of the explosive interview she had with Judge Greg Matisse? And what are your thoughts on the things he accused her of? Do you think she really wanted to give Tokyo Tony some juice? The shop attendant mentioned that there was a brief moment when Wendy looked off during their conversation and he wasn't sure if she was still with them. Tell me in the space provided for comments below.